Time now for focus. Uganda has been generous towards people escaping conflict and famine in South Sudan, but the strain is starting to show. In today's focus, we take you to Bidi Bidi, a settlement hosting at least 270,000 refugees, more than any other place in the world. Last month, the average number of people arriving daily from South Sudan was 2,800. Thais Brook and Charlotte Cossett report. They walk for days in the punishing heat. At the end of the road, this wooden bridge leads to Uganda and some hope of security at last. This informal crossing is held by anti-government rebels in the country's vicious civil war. In a steady stream, hundreds cross here each day. Angelina and her sister spent a month on the road to Uganda. Like all new arrivals, they must go through a security check. The owner, the owner of this luggage here could come and then open it while the Ascari is there checking uh, to see that uh, there's nothing wrong like any weapon. Angelina and her four children are allowed to pass. They had to leave after her husband was taken by government forces. She's relieved to have finally reached safety. Our journey wasn't easy at all, especially with our children. We had to stop regularly. Sometimes we had to rest for two or three days under a tree before starting our long walk again. In the reception centre, each refugee's identity needs to be verified. Every clue is checked, even children's vaccination marks, which are different in South Sudan and Uganda. But because, because the kid is having the what? The, Ugand the South Sudanese sign... We're still going to comment because we're not 100% sure about, about This woman is cleared. She's South Sudanese. But in this part of the country, drought and poverty mean the local population is suffering too. This Ugandan woman is desperate for help, but it's restricted to refugees. They want to benefit from the UN goodies, eh? Things like carpet, things like blanket, things like saucepan. After verification, the refugees are transported to the settlements where they'll build new homes. This vast territory is Bidi Bidi. Less than eight months after opening, it's the biggest refugee settlement in the world, and it's full. More than 270,000 people live here. New arrivals are now sent to a recently opened settlement in Vepi. The UN has declared a famine in parts of South Sudan. Nearly five million people need urgent food aid. Medical teams in Uganda need to do careful health checks, especially on young children who also need vaccinations that aren't available to them at home. But for them, once they start starving, they will have diarrhea, and diarrhea kills a person in no minute. Yeah. This woman hasn't eaten for days, and she can no longer breastfeed. The family will have to be monitored to be sure the children recover. Uganda's refugee settlements are different. There are no tents. Each family receives a small piece of land where they can build a shelter and grow food. On arrival, everyone receives a month's worth of food and a kit for building a shelter. These refugees arrived yesterday, and this is one of the first things that the World Food Programme does, providing them food so that they can cook for themselves. But with thousands crossing into Uganda each day, funds are starting to dry up. We even recently had to cut rations to some refugees that arrived earlier in order to prioritise the new refugees. As new arrivals receive a hot meal, there's a scramble to be first in line. After a night in the rain, everyone's keen to get their share of porridge. Betty waits with the others. In, in, the, in the way, we have, this is six days we don't have anything at the, at the road. We are suffering totally. Mm. This is where Betty will have to build a new home for her family, who fled South Sudan together. Seventeen of them managed to make it here. And this one, my, my daughter, called Clara. And that one is my sister, called Jane. But Betty's brother and her uncle were killed by government forces on the road to Uganda. She's slaughtering here. And the other one, they are, they are using the cutting. Even those who, the dead body, some people can can see dead body on the way, is it, is it just, is it using panga and is it cutting, cutting. This place is all just like that. Mm. The head is 
just there and the body is different, just like that. Mm. South Sudan's political crisis has now become an ethnic battle. The UN warns of genocide. Betty says even children aren't safe. And then if a boy, she want to, to kill this boy out, because she say that this boy is, is the one from future is going again to, to fighting with him. The route may be dangerous, even fatal, but for Betty and thousands more like her, the journey to shelter in Uganda remains the best option for survival. For more on this, I'm now joined by Hélène Keo, Director of Operations at uh, Première Urgence Internationale. Hello, thank you very much indeed for your time. Now, the yeah. report we just broadcast focuses on South Sudanese people who fled to Uganda, but there are, of course, many people displaced uh, within the country. How many? And uh, could you describe the, humanit situation, the humanitarian situation there for us? Exactly. We, we see a situation that is um, with multiple issues in South Sudan. As it was said in your, in your focus, uh, around 5 million persons need urgent food aid, which means they are in a status of food insecurity, either severe or critical. A state of famine was declared in part of the country, which is one of the most affected by the conflict and by displacement. Internal displacement, just one number, 1.9 million people out of 12 are displaced internally in the country. What we see is a worrying situation, is a degrading situation. It's not a surprise because the situation is degrading since some years, since the conflict uh, restarted in South Sudan. But what we see is an impact on all the people, the displaced, the ones who are not displaced because the men are mobilized to uh, participate in the conflict or because the markets are not yet, even in areas less affected by, by, the, by the conflict, they are uh, less um, supplied and there is less supplies on the market. Plus, as it was said also, uh, the roads are very dangerous and people cannot move even to uh, implement their own activities like agricultural activities. So that's a sum of issues. No. And the result of this is a large food insecurity and a risk of famine in some areas. Like you said, famine's been declared uh, in parts of the country, two cu counties, I believe. How much yes. aid is getting to those particular areas? Uh, we at uh, Première Agence Internationale are not in these two particular areas. We are more up north, uh, close to the border of North Sudan. But what we know, uh, globally speaking in the country, is that uh, de delivering aid in South Sudan is a challenge. It's a challenge because of the insecurity on the roads, as I said. Uh, just one, one number, 12 uh, humanitarian aid workers have been killed since the beginning of the year. And it's only part of what's happening on the roads uh, in South Sudan. Logistics is an issue. Uh, we know the rainy season is coming and we know it will be less uh, easy to access most of these people. Plus, there are also some administrative issues in terms of delivering aid, like importing uh, medicines, for example, is difficult and was difficult in the recent month in, uh, in South Sudan. So all this, uh, we know we can mobilize action, we can act in South Sudan, but it's difficult and the issue and the challenge is huge in front of, of all the actors. So we need more, more funds, more means. But we also need political actions for the conflict uh, to find a solution. Isn't the government complicating matters? I mean, it's been accused of uh, preventing aid from reaching some of the people who need it, so particularly apparently in, in rebel-held areas. So what, what we know is that, as I said, delivering aid is not easy in South Sudan. Uh, uh, either all, all parties need to make efforts and the community, the international community, need to push all parties to ensure that access is uh, given for aid. And yes, it's a challenge, it's a daily challenge for logistic issues, but also for all other related issues. How do you explain the fact that there hasn't been more action from the international community? I think to, to, to put it at a global level, because we speak quite a lot uh, currently about South Sudan, about Yemen, about uh, Eastern Africa, 
uh, it's good to speak about the peak of the crisis, but we know that most of these crises are human-made and, and they are linked to conflict. So there is a need for prevention of conflict, resolution of conflict uh, in parallel and in, uh, in complementarity with our efforts, as efforts in the field, because as is not is useless if there is no uh, intervention on the causes of uh, the issues, and mainly in these four countries, we have issues that are uh, that come from the conflict. So we need to have a political action on top and in complementarity of, with aid and aid means developed in the field. Okay, well, we really appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed, Hélène Kiel from uh, Première Urgence Internationale. Thanks, Hélène.